in this video we are going to talk about a varying volume batch reactor or a variable volume batch reactor these reactors are more complex than the simple constant volume batch reactor that uh, we have studied so far so uh, the main use or the main application of this kind of uh, varying volume batch reactors is in uh, case of microprocessing field okay so uh, like suppose you have a bath in which there is a small micro reactor and let's say you have uh, a movable ball over here and this is the reaction site okay so as the reaction takes place and the product is formed this ball may move or like roll about along the uh, length of the channel so this causes a variation in the volume okay now uh, this initial volume is denoted as v0 and volume at any point of time t is denoted as v okay so we are going to uh, see how do we study the kinetics of this variable volume batch reactor now uh, considering that uh, these kind of reactions or this kind of reactors are more common for applications where we have to maintain a constant pressure uh, reason why i am saying that is just imagine your uh, standard piston system that you study in thermodynamics so the work of this piston is to maintain the pressure and uh, isothermal condition of the system similarly this movable ball over here or this movable bead serves the same purpose the and this reactor can be used for isothermal constant pressure operations so we are going to derive the kinetics of this kind of reactor considering a single stoichiometry system okay so for such systems the volume is linearly related to the conversion so let me write this volume is linearly related to the conversion conversion we are denoting as xa this is the typical uh, nomenclature that we have used so we will write this linear relation as v equals to v0 multiplied multiplied by 1 plus epsilon a xa this epsilon a is the fractional change in volume of system okay this is the fractional change in the system volume now uh, from this expression you can write dxa equals to dv by v0 multiplied by epsilon a okay if uh, you want to write it in uh, the straight format let's say if you want to find a relation between the volume when conversion is equal to 1 and the volume when there is no conversion at all then you can simply write epsilon a equals to vxa equals to 1 minus 
v x a equals to zero by v x a equals to zero. So this again, uh, simply I am just restating that linear relationship between the volume and the conversion. Uh, sometimes you know questions are asked on this basis. So uh, let me show you with the help of an example. Consider one uh, isothermal gas phase reaction. Okay, let's say A gives two R. Right. So uh, first case. Starting with pure reactant A. All right. So <clears throat> count the number of molecules uh, present in case of the reactant side and the product side. And since this is a gas phase reaction, the number of molecule will conform to the volume present. So we can directly relate that. Now, <clears throat> when total conversion has taken place, then we will have two molecules of product or two volumes of product. And on the reactant side, we have one volume of product, two minus one by one equals to one. So this epsilon a fractional change in the volume of the system is one. Now consider another case where we are starting with fifty percent inerts. Okay, so that simply means A plus I. I means inerts gives two R plus I because inerts do not react into the system. Okay, so. Now, if you see the volume on the product side, we have three units now, and on the reactant side, we have two units divided by the initial uh, reactant side at two units. So now it becomes half. Okay. So the idea is epsilon a. Uh, you know, it accounts for both the reaction stoichiometry as well as the inerts present. Okay, so this is how uh, we talk about the fractional change in uh, the system volume for uh, variable batch reactors. So now uh, we will. Uh, Earlier we had uh, seen that v equals to v naught multiplied by one plus epsilon a x a, and we can get from there that d x a equals to d v by epsilon a v zero. Okay. Also, if you want to relate n a, then you can write n a equals to n a zero one minus x a. Okay, now writing the concentration term, C A is N A by V, or simply N A zero one minus X A divided by V zero into one plus epsilon A X A. Okay, so. Now you can write this as C A zero one minus X A by one plus epsilon A X A. Okay, this is going to give you the relation between conversion X A and the concentration for isothermal varying volume system. Okay. And we are going with the linearity assumption. Okay, the rate of reaction, that is, uh, the disappearance rate of uh, the component A, is given as minus R A equals to 
DNA by VDT, right? Because CA equals to NA by V. Now, if you uh, plug in all of this information uh, into this expression, into this rate expression, then you will get minus RA equals to CA0 by 1 plus epsilon A XA into D XA DT. This is the expression that you will get. If you want to calculate this in terms of volume, then you can also write minus RA equals to CA0 by V into epsilon A multiplied by dv dt which in turn reduces to ca0 by epsilon a into d of ln v dt okay now uh, again when you have experimental data uh, of your reaction then you can carry out the differential method of analysis or the integral method of analysis to uh, see uh, the kinetics of your system and get the parameters. Now, uh, the procedure for uh, differential analysis is uh, same as for the constant volume situation, except that instead of uh, DCA DT, we are now replacing it with this kind of term or this kind of term okay and accordingly the plot will be constructed and we can take the slope for integral method of analysis uh, very simple rate forms can be used and uh, i will show you the zero order and uh, first order rate form equations uh, for very higher uh, or complex rate forms it's not going to work in such cases you have to go with the differential method of analysis so let's see for integral method of analysis. Let's see for zero order. Okay. So for a homogeneous zero order uh, reaction, uh, we can write minus RA equals to CA0 by epsilon A D ln V DT equals to k okay and uh, we know that basically we write k because c a zero uh, c a to the power zero right so that becomes one therefore it becomes k now if you integrate this let me write the integrated form it becomes c a zero by epsilon a ln v by v0 equals to kt okay so what you have to do simply you can okay sorry i drew a very non straight line let me draw a straight line so if you make a plot on your y axis you have ln of v by v0 and on your x axis you have time so you can have your data like this and like this it's on the first quadrant when epsilon a is greater than zero and if epsilon a is less than zero then it lies on the fourth quadrant so the slope in either case becomes equivalent to slope equals to k epsilon a by c a naught okay so for the two sub cases of epsilon a you will get the uh, value for the slope and accordingly you can obtain the kinetics of your system now coming for first order uh, reaction so if it is a first order case let us consider the unimolecular type okay so unimolecular means a gives products then we can write minus ra equals to ca0 
by epsilon a d of ln v dt equals to k multiplied by c a. Now, this c a over here can be written as 1 minus x a by 1 plus epsilon a x a because simply n a by v right. So, you can write this expression. Now, uh, if you get the integrated form uh, by replacing x a with v then you can write let me write the integrated form by replacing x a with v we will get minus ln 1 minus delta v by epsilon a v 0 equals to k t ok. So, in this case you will need a semi logarithmic plot. So, on your y axis you have minus ln 1 minus delta v by epsilon a v naught and on your x axis you have time. So, you will make the best fit plot of your data points and the slope is k ok. Therefore, this is how you study for systems using uh, integral method of analysis and this is applicable for very simple systems uh, for a variable volume batch reactor. If you have to study for very complex uh, kinetics, then you would prefer the differential method of analysis. That is it. Thank you.